class. Today we're talking about how to make an animal sculpture. First things first, what you need to do is have about six to eight images of your animal you're going to create. You're going to uh, make sure it's different. I just don't want like six sides of one animal. I want like various different angles of it, maybe close-ups of the head, the feet, various different pictures used as reference material when creating this piece. We're going to use an armature, which is newspaper. I have it in my room in front of this table right down here. I grab some newspaper, kind of ball it up and build slabs of clay around that. Um, kind of like we did with some other projects, but you're gonna have that as a form. And as you build and shape it, you're gonna remove the clay and all that stuff as well from it. Uh, I don't have the actual project I'm working on in here, but I'm gonna include an image of it right over here so you get to see it as well. And you're just gonna work on it and build it. The big couple things to focus on is how well you look at your pictures for reference. Does it have to be exactly like your pictures? No, but you should follow along with that. And the other big thing is texture, texture, texture. Animals have texture to them. They have fur, not have fur, have skin, whatever. We're trying to think about texture we're putting onto our piece. So stuff you gotta think about. Everything in this should be hollow as best you can. There might be a couple solid things like the feet and uh, maybe some little appendages and stuff like that, but we're trying to make everything hollow as possible. You just gotta build it around newspaper. Make sure you pull the newspaper out when you're done. And the whole video will show you this. A couple of things to think about is make sure you have one hole poked in the body. I know this is a great debate. Do you need it? Do you don't? But for me, it makes my life a lot easier. A lot easier if there's a hole in it. And if you have hollow appendages and you attach them, make sure there's a hole poked in the body. So there's like, all you need is one hole in the piece so all the air can escape. It just makes my life easier. Can you sometimes get away with it? Yep, but let's not tempt fate. So let's go ahead, watch the video, and let's get started on our animal sculpture. Let's begin. As we can see here, I have my picture laid out of my rabbit. So there's my reference material I'm going to use to follow along with building it. Here I am balling up paper. I'm going to begin to wrap my slab around the piece. So I cut out the strips. I'm going to wrap it around it. Kind of begin to build the shape of the piece I'm going to create and make. Just kind of, that's how it starts. Nothing fancy with it. Don't have to tape it together, but it's kind of there for you to kind of begin to build, shape, create, and make your piece. Get the basic body forms I'm trying to do here with the newspaper shoved in there. Once I have the basic form done out, I'll begin to cut parts in there, begin to kind of push out certain appendages, stuff like that, like the back of the legs, stuff like that. Add the slabs on top of it, kind of compress them in there. Uh, get the basic shape of what it needs to be. It's kind of what I'm working on. It's kind of working on the piece, getting how I want it to be, adding more clay and slabs around it, like paddling it, shaping it, really get the basic shape, not worried about details at all. Once I have the basic shape kind of laid out, I'm going back in there, I pulled some of the newspaper out, going back in there, blending, smoothing everything together. Make sure that bottom piece that's on there is well attached. Uh, everything else, I'm going back in there, smoothing my features even more and kind of just shaping the piece a little bit as well. Um, if the clay is really soft, you might be able to do this. You might have to use a hair dryer on it or maybe have it sit for a day, then come back and shape it some more. But really I'm working on the body shape and then I will go back in there, add the newspaper back in there to help support it for now not take the newspaper out, but really I'm blending, smoothing, getting the basic shape of my piece and getting it ready to go and just making sure it all fits correctly and works right and just kind of blending everything together. And then, like I said, I will shove the newspaper back in there. Once I have the basic shape laid out, I got a neck on there. I use like a pinch bowl for the back side of the head. Then I'm wrapping slabs around to, to build the shape, the face, stuff like that. You can build the front of it, build the back of it. There's many different ways to build the head. I'm just kind of adding slabs of clay, shaping it, pulling it together, kind of closing in there around that newspaper, paddling it in the basic shape of that rabbit. I have my reference material there, getting the basic form and shape. Again, not worry about super amount of detail, just the basic shape of what I'm trying to build.
Once I get the basic shape of the head, I will begin to put the eyes in there, using my thumb, my knuckle to get a basic shape of what it needs to be. This gives me a guideline to kind of look at my reference material, make sure my head is coming out correctly, uh, keep forming it, and as you can see here in the video, I just keep kind of working on the shape a little bit, making sure it's about as close as I can make it, as about as well as I can do. Once I have the uh, head kind of done, I'm now looking at getting some arms built. Again, these are also hollow forms built on there, and I usually use like a, a paintbrush, some form around it to kind of build around them. So I score and slip them on there, get the basic built on where the legs are gonna go, the front of the legs, the back of the legs, with those pushed up material. I can go back, add more stuff on there, but get the basic shape. As we can see here, I've got all the legs kind of on there. I'm going back in there, adding details. It's still full of newspaper and kind of just working the shape around. I've added feet on there. The feet are solid, so those aren't hollow, but the legs are. I've cut holes, attached everything on there built the piece up as best I can. Really just work on basic shaping detail so I kind of have exactly what I want to look like. It'd be carving away clay, adding it on there, trying to get the basic form. So it looks like the rabbit. Looking at my reference material, kind of following along with it, getting kind of, kind of building the basic piece of what I need it to be. Quick note of the tools I'm using. I'm using wood tools, uh, metal scrapers, uh, ribbon tools, uh, little rubber ribbons, uh, all kinds of little rubber, all kinds of various tools to kind of work and manipulate the shape. Even a paddle comes in very handy when working on this project. When the sculpture gets a little more firmer, I'm going to cut off the back side of it, as you can see here, and I'm going back in, blending certain seams together. I've kind of pulled all the newspaper out of there. Uh, that allows me to get in there, kind of smooth and shape a little bit more, manipulate the piece a little bit more, uh, kind of define things more. Also go in there and blend and smooth everything. Use that wooden sticks to kind of make sure things blended well together, join together, everything else. Uh, I made the ears a little bit prior. Uh, I let them sit for a while because they're not really soft and flimsy. So that's a good idea and I'm now attaching them on there. Like I said, all the newspaper's been pulled out of there and I'm kind of just getting work on the next step. Uh, getting my piece kind of built. And once I feel comfortable, confident, the shape is where I need it to be, everything's pretty firm, so I'll put the back back on the rabbit, score and slip it back on, blend it, smooth it, never know it was ever done. And also that paper's all been removed from there. So it's less waste material, things to catch fire in the kiln or cause problems with the piece down the road. Now I'm focusing on details, checking out the ears, blending and smoothing certain parts together, uh, getting ready to the part where I'm going to start adding texture soon, but really making sure all the parts of my rabbit uh, or bunny have a certain kind of feature to them and they're kind of correct as I can make them, and then I'm going to begin to start adding the details. Now I'm going to add some details to the face. I'm going to add the eyeballs, I'm going to add the nose and get those kind of shape pieces on there. Uh, take little balls of clay, score and slip them in there. I'm gonna add the nose on there as well, and then I will add little coils around the eyelids to kind of begin to shape the eyes, and begin to define them more. Uh, basically, get my reference material, try and get the reference idea of what I'm trying to create and make. Again, do not forget to score and slip these little features on. Now once I have everything attached on there, the eyeballs are kind of there as well, I'm coming back in, just making sure all the parts are well blended, looking at little details I can do for that face or that head, making sure it's good to go, using the wooden uh, shapers, the rubber shapers, the wooden carving tools, my ribbon tools, getting everything kind of the way I want it to be, making sure certain parts stand out, 
uh, adding clay if I need to, really just defining the head of that rabbit. So it's kind of getting ready for the next stages of the feet and texture and everything else onto the project. This part here, I'm working on the feet. Uh, I've gone back in, got the basic shape, I've carved into them, added clay on top of them, go back in with a rubber uh, shaper and a ribbon tool and kind of shape and create what the feet should look like. Again, taking the time, looking at my reference trail, making sure it's best I can possibly make it. It just, just takes the time of working it and kind of coming around shaping it. Now we're getting to the point now where we're getting close to starting to add texture. Texture, texture, texture. Ah, yes. You don't think you have enough texture? Add more. Really look at your piece, really define what you're doing, really push the texture on your piece. This can make or break your sculpture, is how well you add the texture on there. You can always go back and smooth it out if it's too much, but in my opinion, there's never enough texture on your animal sculptures. Here I'm going over the piece with a damp sponge and also a cloth, kind of smooth that texture a little bit more so it's not so rough. So it kind of blends into the piece. This is trial and error, really get in the way you want your rabbit to look. I'm also adding clay back on there, uh, making definition stand out more, really just trying to give that piece the texture it needs, really can enhance it. You know, you, it's more than just carving in, it's adding on experimentation. If you have short hairs, it's gonna be short strokes. If you have long hairs, it can be long, long strokes. If you have scales, you're gonna carve in the scales. It just takes time. This is this is where you really gotta take the time to really work on it. You know, little details really make the piece stand out. Again, as you can see in the head, head up here, I'm going back in adding short little strokes for the hair, making it stand out more, giving it that definition the piece needs. Here's some example of me adding clay onto the head. I'm just adding some more hairs, going back in there, adding small little coils, kind of blending them on there, smoothing them, then I'll come back in with a, my, one of my ribbon tools, kind of define them more. This adds more dimension to the piece and also adds some more interest because the piece isn't flat and things stand out. So I'm just kind of having even some hairs pop up as well. This just gives it some more personal taste. Does my picture have that reference? No, but you know, I'm allowed to make my own choices as well and make them stand out a little bit different. So that's what I'm doing here, just adding a little more variation to it by adding coils of clay, going back in there, uh, blending and smoothing and making them stand out more, and that gives it some more definition and more visual interest and makes my piece look more realistic. Have patience with yourself. Really take the time to work on the sculpture. Look at the picture, look at references. How can you make it your own? It's gonna take some time. You're gonna be happier than you do? Nope, you'll probably take certain parts off. But really just take the time to make the best sculpture you can make. Hey look, more blending and smoothing, adding your details, going back over, making sure your piece stands out. It just takes time, time, time. You can see here I'm working on it using a ribbon tool, carving away some clay, adding more texture. It just takes time. I wish I could say it was something easy to do it, but really the best way to do it is just keep using those ribbon tools, carving into it, smoothing it out, getting the shape, working the project over and over and over again. It just takes time. Time is the key.
program again, uh, changing my reference material a little bit, adding little hairs to the piece. I'm just taking little blobs of clay, putting them on there, uh, adding some shape to them. And yeah, that's what I'm kind of doing to make them stand out a little bit more. And just adding little clay pops to give it more dimension so it's not so flat looking. Gives them my rabbit little personality. What kind of personality can I do? Your, your own sculpture. How can you make it your own, make it stand out even more? Again, be creative. Try something new. Be a little bit different. It is okay. Here I'm wrapping up my sculpture. Finishing up a little few details. I'm going to pick it up, sign it, make sure there's a hole poked in the bottom so the air can escape, and I'm done. Let's see what you can make.